Hello, sport fans. This is Bill Stern, taking you to America's leading experimental shooting preserve, Olin Matheson's Nilo Farms. Nilo, along with hundreds of other shooting preserves throughout the country, offers wonderful shooting sport today. And make certain there'll be an ample supply of game for tomorrow. But our favorite's the high-flying mallard, the big green-headed baby with pounds of power and brains to match. He rates high on any duck hunter's list. And if you're good enough and maybe lucky enough to bag a pair, man, you got yourself a dinner that's hard to beat. He says all you could see was a little black dot going up, coming down in the waves, going up, coming down. He says it kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. He thought, oh boy, I hope Buck gets that duck before he gets to the other side of the bay. Pretty soon the duck, uh, the head started getting bigger and bigger and coming back. He says, I knew I won the field trial right then. Of course, King Buck was national champion in 52 and 53, so that put Nilo Kennel's name on, on you know, the lookout. In the late 40s, uh, Mr. Owen, who owned Owen Corporation, wanted to get in the field trials, and that was to train Labradors. And uh, at that time, you know, Cotton Pershaw was the best dog trainer. In the 40s, he had about four national champions, so he was really the top dog of trainers. Mr. Owen says, I want champions. Pershaw says, I can do that. So they struck their deal. Cotton's first job was to uh, find a place to train these dogs. So there was a farm for sale right where we're sitting. It was 200 acres. It was for sale. Mr. Owen bought it. They built the kennel and they started training dogs. Uh, of course, the most notable dog we had is King Buck. And uh, the Cotton got him, trained him, and uh, of course, the rest is history. Um, the one thing that really made King Buck stand out was his ability to take a line. When it came to field trial day, he knew it was, you know, the competition was tough. There was just something about that dog that made him perform even that much better on those field trial days. And that's what really put King Buck over the top. The big thing about Nilo is, you know, the people come and go, but the dogs are always the same. In the 70 some years of, of the history of Nilo, I'm the fourth manager, and I've been fortunate enough to be around the farm what feels like my entire life. So I got to know the guys that, that worked here prior, um, to hear the stories about Mr. Olin, about Cotton, um, to have them passed down to me, I'm very grateful for. And uh, hopefully, you know, I can pass that tradition on to that next generation of if it's the dog handlers or the, the hunters that come out here or the guy that replaces me, you know, um, hopefully I can continue that heritage of passing along those stories about King Buck and, and the duck hunts that we've had out here that are just, you know, just phenomenal. Of course, most people know about uh, your federal duck stamp. Uh, they have a competition every year where artists and sculptors, you know, bring their, their wares and then and, and a stamp is picked out of that. So Mr. Owen got hold of Maynard Reese, who was one of the top artists at the time, to come down and, and paint a picture of, of King Buck, which he did with a, with a mallard in his mouth. And they submitted that for the uh, duck stamp competition. It won. And uh, there was a little bit of dispute after that about uh, it's supposed to be a conservation stamp and here we are having a dead duck. So they changed the rules to that competition so that uh, it'll never happen again. So it's a very unique stamp. Uh, everybody at Nilo or anybody that comes to Nilo should be proud of that, that uh, it's our dog on the duck stamp. There's a lot of messaging out there on what conservation is and what it is not. And Winchester has always been very strong in working with partners like Ducks Unlimited 
to communicate the benefits of conservation and understanding what other organizations do. Uh, you learn a little bit more and, and you try to put more effort into, again, furthering missions that will take our, our traditions forward. And uh, I see the future of Nilo uh, as very bright and very exciting because a lot of times uh, you can find that at places, but Nilo is, is a very uh, phenomenal facility with rich heritage, tradition, and a legacy that not many not many brands or facilities across the United States or North America for that matter can claim. There's a, a unique relationship between Winchester and Nilo and, and not a lot of people in today's age I think understand that and, and uh, uh, Nilo goes back you know to the 1950s and Obviously, Winchester is a brand of 150 years plus, so uh, they are definitely connected. Mr. Olin, uh, this was his vision to have a place uh, like Nilo, and obviously Nilo, spelled backwards, uh, is Olin. So uh, it's, it's one of those relationships today that's fun to talk about and fun to communicate to people who like to hunt, who like to shoot, who like to be outdoors, and uh, it's a very unique property. Uh, filled with opportunity and filled with uh, just things that, again, if you like the outdoors, it's, it's a place to be. Uh, we, we have the Ducks Unlimited uh, logo on our waterfowl packaging. You know, we're the official ammunition of Ducks Unlimited, and it's one of those things that may seem simple, but what it does is it communicates a tie to Ducks Unlimited and that we support their mission uh, their efforts, and again, is just another testimony that you know we're there for them, we're consistent in our support, and, and while it's been a legacy, it's something that we want to focus on for decades to come. The end of a perfect day of field, a day this couple will remember a long, long time. Good game, good guns, truly a sportsman's paradise.